Hey, Roberto Monaco here, and today I have a very, very special friend, Dr. Fred Domenico. What's up, buddy? How you doing, my friend, my brother? Oh, man, I'm so excited for those, but I don't know if I can say for those who don't know, because I think everybody knows you. Dr. Fred Domenico, the founder of Elite Coaching, a stud, master coach, NLP, life coaching extraordinaire, and uh, I had a, pl a pleasure to know Dr. Fred for a couple of years now. And I've been to several of his classes. He's just phenomenal. He's an awesome teacher, awesome coach, an awesome speaker. So thanks so much for sharing your wisdom with us today. Hey, with that introduction, that's why you're my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth, man. That's the truth. And, uh, and uh, as we start the call here, the Cairo Advocate, basically, we love the word advocate because if you look in the dictionary, it's someone who is publicly advocate or speaks or writes in a cause and obviously you have been a big advocate for the chiropractic profession and that's why we're having this conversation today so tell me what is your advocate story how did you get it started and how you became eventually became a transition from chiropractic chiropractor to coach well it takes for almost 30 years and put it into a couple short sentences you know when i found Really the thing is when you find chiropractic, we know as a spiritual being that's our calling. So as soon as you know that, then you were then your fear of not doing it becomes greater than anything. And that's really the basis. Um, from that point, I believe the principle of chiropractic. I you know, the principle is life force moves through the body, subluxates fine causes disease, and people will not be able to fulfill their life purpose if their body's subluxated. So with that, I mean, I had coaches and I strive to be my best and my goal is a thousand a week and, and, you know, I went outside of chiropractic and inside of chiropractic just to be my best and one day I looked at my schedule, um, you know, it was before my pre-shift huddle and there was 232 people on my schedule. We had about eight new patients that day and a bunch of re-exams. I, I wasn't smart enough to hire an associate so, you know, I just saw... I knew I was about 90 days away from 300 a day, was going to hit 1,000 a week. That wasn't even a question. Uh -huh. I probably had about 10 or 15,000 people driving by my clinic every day, and I'm thinking, man, that's 300. And I realized I'm not even affecting my community. And at that point, I literally looked at my schedule and I prayed and I said, God, there's got to be something bigger because I didn't want to just affect my community. I wanted to change the impression of chiropractic around the world. So when your vision goes from community to humanity, then your opera doors begin to open. I and love that. A year that. and a half later, I was coaching. I love that community to humanity. I love that. I love that. And how long have you been coaching now with Elite Coaching? Uh, well, Elite Coaching really started, uh, initiated in 2005. You know, the purpose. The purpose always is intact, but the people change. So I, so I took it over from my original partners in 2008, revamped everything. Okay. That took a couple of years. Really applied the life coaching NLP principles. And of course, our core value is spinal correction. I think that's the best application to the principles. So really, it transformed uh, beginning in 2008, and every year it's just expanded and um, you know continues to be truly the elite mm -hmm. spinal correction. I mean, you know, we're not for all chiropractors, but if you're a spinal corrective doctor, uh, we will, we do create the most successful and, and fulfilling spinal corrective practices and lives in the profession. I love that. So I know because I've been to your classes and I know you coach like a, a lot of high level doctors in the country. Yes. What do you think, how do your clients right now, your doctors, advocate the chiropractic message? How do they go about advocating? Well, you know, here's the thing, in my opinion, I'll try and keep this short, but the challenge in chiropractic, I think we've been at this 119 years or 120 years now, um, you know, the profession has taught us real well how to talk about a subluxation, okay. describing an x-ray. Okay. Oh, and and you know, being truly the master of influence and my coach, that twenty percent of influence is facts. We haven't even hit twenty percent of the population. We've hit three point four percent. So, so the oh. communication of what we've done of describing a subluxation hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. So, there's what you do. What do we do? 
hey, we help people re achieve optimal health through uh, spinal correction, right? Then there's what do you really do? And you know, 80% of success is physiology and psychology. You got to mm -hmm. change the way people feel to change the way they think. Mm -hmm. So what do you really do? That takes a different vocabulary. You have to know how to talk to that person. So I teach people how to say, what do you really do? Hey, we empower people to take control of their health and their life. And through chiropractic care, we help them reach not only optimal health, but their optimal potential so they can fulfill their life purpose. Now that has something that people can grab onto. Mm -hmm. It hits them in the spirit. When you talk facts, you're talking to their frontal lobe. Yep. You're talking to their frontal lobe, you get all kinds of frontal lobe objections. We got to speak to their heart and their spirit, mm -hmm. an innate to innate connection. And when you speak the truth of something that's more empowering, people feel it at a depth that's way past their frontal lobe, and all they know is they're gravitated towards it. So if there's what you do, chiropractic, what do you really do? Mm -hmm. How do you affect people's lives and create lifelong relationships? You, you have so much conviction when you speak. You really truly do it, which I love it. And I notice by going to a lot of chiropractic events, some chiropractors have a lot of conviction. You know, our, for example, our buddy friend, Dr. Chris Zeno, and other chiropractors that sometimes struggle. And uh, sometimes they're seeing, you know, seven, I, I don't want to throw numbers here because some people get turned off by numbers, but they don't have that conviction. What is that? Why some people that they go to the same school, why they have the same training in your opinion, because you've been around chiropractors for many years, why some chiropractors have so much conviction why others don't and struggle? Why is that? Well, I think there's a couple reasons. Number one, I think the most important reason is how I started this. You got to know that this is your life purpose and the greatest fear mm -hmm. is not doing it. So there's the pain of discipline, doing what it takes to become great, and then there's the pain of regret. Yep. That is, you know if, you're, if you are fulfilling your vision. And that's really it. It's your conviction. And the, and the problem is what I learned in coaching is sure. chiropractors are people too. Now, I never realized what that. Do you mean that. What do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? You know, people come in, they have objections, they think about themselves. When you're a chiropractor and you're functioning on the level of contribution, it's not about you. So when you're watering down your message, you want to be accepted by your patients, you're thinking, what can they accept, what they can't accept? You know, am I really comfortable doing this? I don't like public speaking. All these things, the problem is you're putting yourself first. Mm -hmm. You didn't put humanity first. So you're not Ooh. operating on the level of contribution. You're operating, operating on the level of your own significance, of your own fear of uncertainty, and all these lower human needs, when the highest level in your vision and fulfillment of that vision is in the level of contribution. I'll say one more thing. If you look at uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, Mother Teresa, you know, any, or, or Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in prison for yep. a cause. Did they think about themselves? Did they put themselves first or did they put humanity first? Humanity first all day long. That's why they did great things. So the, the big barrier is thinking about yourself. You know, sometimes I was just having a conversation with uh, one of our coaching clients yesterday. And the feedback was that that I gave to him was that he wasn't he, he was like apologetic apologetic for telling the truth, kind of like oh I'm sorry, but some accusations can kill you or whatever. So it's kind of almost like can I can I tell the truth or do I have a permission to tell the truth? So it's kind of like to just and I think a lot a lot of times chiropractors they they struggle just by telling the truth. They're like, dude, you don't have to be be apologizing for it is what it is. I, have you yeah. noticed this pattern? Sometimes we are afraid to break rapport. A lot of chiropractors, they, we, we are needy. We are afraid. No, we, because I'm not a chiropractor, but like people are needy. They are afraid to tell the truth and they become, they come from this place of uh, inferiority. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. And again, that's because you're putting your own insecurities there. Now, trust me, you know, when I was at 700 a week, you know, did I have some, my own self-esteem problems? No question. I, yep. mean, you know, I mean, you grow out of it now, I'm 54, so, you know, hopefully we, we move past those. However, you know, I've heard a funny thing, you know, when you're in your 30s, you care about what other people think. When you're in your 40s, you don't care what other people think. When you're in your 50s, you realize they were never thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is when you're thinking about yourself. You know, oh, that's, buddy. That's when your fear gets in the way, and your greatest fear has to be not fulfilling your vision. So... 
When you believe a subluxated spine, when every person standing in front of you is making a life or death decision, if they walk out, what is the consequence of their life? See, I, see, I can't, I can't shoulder that responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's too much. That's the pain of regret. Mm -hmm. The pain of discipline is is ounces. The pain of regret will collapse your life and make you sick. Oh, that's good, bud. Make sure you guys uh, rewind this video and listen to that a couple of times before you start your day. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I well, love if it. You, if you do have the pain of regret, you're already feeling that suffering. So, so that may be familiar. So here's the idea. From I know there's there's not one thing. There's several things. But if you were to tell me one thing that separates the average chiropractors to the great chiropractors, amazing ones, what would be one thing that you notice? Well, the great chiropractors do what it takes and they learn to communicate. I mean, we have a message that can change people's lives. And if you don't study communication technology, you're just not going to get there. I mean, everything is about communication. And if and some people, if you're passionate enough, your conviction is high, you know, people buy your passion. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have people that walk out that may not agree with their message and you didn't handle their objection. And when you care about one, you know, if you want to be ruler over many, you have to care about one. You have to be faithful with a small, yep. with a small amount. So when every person matters, when you talk about do what it takes in terms of communication, what do you mean specifically? You got to get training. Because when every person matters, you know, I don't care how good you are in spinal correction. I coach the top spinal corrected people in the world. I mean, I, you know, I coach Steve Harrison's clinic. You know, you have the top in, in all the techniques and okay. either are or have been elite clients. So with scoliosis, the whole thing, um, clinical certainty can help. And passion can help, but then they're buying your personality. If you have a personality-driven practice, then you're a prison to your purpose because you can't ever leave. So if you want any freedom, then you learn to communicate. You train your team. You delegate. And, and everybody on your team communicates at such a high level that it runs with you or without you. Because although our purpose is great, I know I was a prisoner of my purpose for 11 years before I got the professional communication training that I did. And then turned systems where if I was there or not, our practice flourished. I didn't have to be there. They weren't buying me, they were buying, the patients bought their own needs and desires. Prisoner of your purpose, that is powerful, bud. I love that. That's so, that makes sense to me, that makes sense to me. Now, as far as, I, I wanna provide some killer how-to ideas so by the way, I influenced Dr. Fred to provide three things that you can do today right after this uh, video here so you can improve your practice. Now he's going to share two right now. And the last one is going to be only for our members. So by the way, you can become a member uh, of Care Ad Advocate for free. So just make sure you register so you can get a third tip. So let's talk about what is one thing that doctors, regardless of their level, if they're doing 100 a week, 500,000, they can revisit. What's one idea they can revisit so that immediately they can start producing bigger, better, faster results? What's one tip that you can give us? Well, God, okay, there, there's tons. Number one, you have to learn to communicate individually. Okay. To learn to inspire people one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Um, the first thing I would say is understanding and handling objections then an objection is it's reframing how you see objections. Objections are not barriers. Okay. Objections are a person telling you what might stop them from being in your program. Mm -hmm. So it's really an open door. Like what we teach is how to reframe an objection. You want to seek objections. Most people are afraid of objections. I you love that. Convince people. But, in, but when you help release an objection, you open the door that allows a person to step into your program. So what an objection really is, is an opportunity to clear, to clear that thought, change their thought in a way that allows them to say, okay, now I feel better about coming into your program, but I just had this thought. So what you want to do is not get into a frontal lobe battle. Don't try and convince people, but ask a question. Mm -hmm. One of the most important 
life coaching tips is to be curious. Mm -hmm. So if a person says, well, what does my insurance cover? Well, that could be eight million reasons. So rather than seeing that as a, as a, um, a barrier, you would say, well, is that going to determine if you're in the program or how you're in the program? Let's get clarity. Well, if they say, well, I don't have time, you know, or if they have an objection, then be curious. Well, why would you say that? If someone says, well, I don't believe in chiropractic. Well, let's be curious. Why do you feel that way? Well, I don't believe my spine controls my organs. Okay. Um, I'm sure you have a reason. I didn't say it was a good reason. Mm -hmm. sure you have a reason. Can you explain why you feel that way? So right there, when a person has to explain their own objection, mm -hmm. they literally can talk themselves out of it. So their objection is their responsibility. Don't see it as a barrier. See it as an open door to ask a question to change their mindset. I love it because sometimes uh, the awareness is enough to change someone's beliefs and behaviors. Because maybe when they're, they try to explain to you, they'll be like, you know what, that's kind of silly. Why I have this thought anyway? You're right. So that's great, man. I love it. I love and it. People literally will talk themselves out of an objection. I love that. So again, it's not your responsibility, it's their responsibility. I love it. Man, you, you have a lot of one-liners now, man. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Trying to keep this short, right? Oh, I love it. What is the sec what's the second tip here? What's the second tip? Oh, well, probably the most important thing that everybody knows they should do. You know, really your shoulds need to become us. You know, okay. God gave us the greatest tool, and that is a mind that when we make a decision we activate our reticular activating system. So what's that mean? When you raise your awareness, all the solutions come in. And this is really your specialty, is you have to teach a new patient workshop. Mm -hmm. People buy why, they don't buy how. Well, let's talk about that because um, one of my clients that he does the super well, he does over a thousand a week, and he, he believes that he is patient lectures. Yes, when they whatever the system guys are using, they won before they actually set up for care. He believes that his patient lecture sets the frame for the entire care, right? So he believes an event because you know from influence, the person who sets the frame wins the game. So he take this experience of like a forty-five minute lecture is almost like it's not just your quote unquote vomit information, right? Now you really create an experience. And you talk about the why, so people get it. So, so in the long term, right, you have, you're gonna have a higher chance to to transform that person into a wellness patient because they understand the why. So I love that. So specifically, how how do you go about inspiring your doctors to do lectures, or to how do you tell, how do you explain them the value of doing lectures for their patients? Well, I guess it comes down to the pain of discipline or the pain of regret because people that have tried them, even if you haven't been that successful, you haven't persisted, everybody knows that a patient that goes to your workshop is a better patient. Why is that? I want to, no, I want to, I want to get your feedback on it. Why is that? Okay. Well, first of all, that guy that sees a thousand a week, I mean, I totally yep. agree. Um, our philosophy is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. The fact that we find the re number one reason people fail is they don't have a compelling reason. Okay. And that's why people don't teach a lecture. Maybe you didn't have a system that got people there, or you know, and there's definitely systems that can get eight out of ten in your first in your first lecture. So if you haven't succeeded, it's your system. Okay. It's not that it won't work. Okay. Every high volume guys know know you have to teach a lecture. There's not a I don't think there's any person over two fifty a week or three fifty, and definitely people above there. You know, that's an essential part. So number one, they have a compelling reason. Our philosophy here is that we find their compelling reason on day one. Then we, we pour some fuel on it on day two. Now that lecture is like pouring a gallon of freaking lighter fluid on a bomb. <laughs> so they come out of there. Their compelling reason is so strong. The probability they're going to commit is so high. So there are systems that teach that that workshop is the main compelling reason. I want people committed before they go to the workshop yep. so that I have 100% certainty they're committed. I don't want a question during that workshop. Now, what people need to do, Roberto, is they need to go to your boot camp and they need to learn how to give that 
So you have so much confidence. Mm -hmm. Eight out of 10 people in that audience, 16% mm -hmm. of the people probably aren't going to do anything. Those are the laggards. Mm -hmm. You got eight out of 10 that you feel very confident they're going to commit. You know, eight out of 10 of the guests that are sitting there are going to sign up. I love that. So then you need to get trained and have a system. If you failed at it before, it's because you weren't trained. That goes all the way back to how we started this, your conviction to your purpose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking about others rather than yourself. So the tip is get the training. Teach your workshop. Anybody that has grown a successful and fulfilling practice, you have to see yourself as a teacher before you see yourself as a doctor. If you can't teach them, you can't fix them. Ooh, that's a, you see another one-liner there, man. Power lines. <laughs> if you cannot teach them, you cannot fix them. I love that. That's <laughs> and your goal is not to fix them. Your goal is to yep. teach them how to yep. live. Yep. So you can't teach them. You can't teach Help them, them how to live. You teach them how to live. That's not through chiropractic. That's through their mindset. I chiropractic love that. Chiropractic is how. Now, Dr. Uh, Fred has one more tip, but again, just sign up for free for a car advocate, but before, so sign up, so we're gonna get the video. That's the best one, the best for last. Now, Dr. Fred here, a lot of people are always blown away by your expertise, and they say, how can I work with him? So, if someone is listening to us right now, they say, I wanna work with Dr. Fred, what's the best way to start getting involved with elite coaching? Talk to me. We have a whole coaching system front door to back door to build amazing practices. And really, people are out there, maybe with another coaching group, which is great. Okay. If you're fulfilled in that. And, and people have been with other coaches. Unfortunately, not everybody has a great experience, although there's a lot of great coaches out there. So, really, I think the question people ask themselves is how can I make a minimal investment? Really, and get absolutely the most power. Yes. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, hey, how can I have the blue light sale but still buy that Ferrari? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How can I get a Ferrari at a Chevy price? <laughs> really, what it is 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 the boot camps. I mean, our boot camps. What what we really teach at the boot camps is how to become an inspired leader. Okay. And really, that's our life coaching NLP. It's such advanced communication that this is communication training. Yep. Corporations pay $60,000 to have their CEOs and sales teams go through. You can't learn this in chiropractic, there's no way. And what it really teaches you is how to talk to someone, not only build rapport and all the dynamics, and dynamics communication, but how to help a person find that compelling reason within themselves, pull that inspiration out of them to make them want to change their life. So their compelling reason and inspiration is so strong. You know, uh, you listen to the uh, interview we did with uh, Kyra Thought Leaders with Dr. Chris. And Love I it. About the difference between willpower and inspiration. Inspiration pours from you. And, and what it does is it drives you and it pulls you towards something. So how to talk to a person that finds that inspiration is so deep within them that it pours out and makes them want to walk across fire to change their life, and you're the person that they want to guide you. That's what the boot camp is about. Now we take that, those communication tools, and we apply it to a posture, organ, spinal uh, corrective based practice. Now what I guarantee is you and your team will not be the same people when you walk out. You'll walk in on Monday morning at nine, when you walk out Sunday at one, number one, you will have released many of your limiting thoughts. Your standards will go through the roof of you and your team. Your training, your whole mindset becomes different to where people are actually telling you how to inspire them, but because you don't have the training, you don't even notice it. Your reticular, your RAS, reticular activating system changes so fast that all of a sudden you see, oh my God, these people are talking to me and they're telling me how they want to change their life. I never saw this last week. I love that. I love that. So how do how do we contact you? What's the page? What's the web? What's the best way to for anybody to sign up for your first book? Do you have a one bootcamp specifically that you're coming up that you want to talk about it? Well, we have April in Phoenix, but you know they need time to train. Uh, our our next full series is in July, 
in Atlanta, July, August. Boot okay. Camp 1 really takes him from Doc, crack my back, and you know, I want to change my life. The second one is how to, how to get him in the program, invested in it, and create a lifetime patient. So it's really a patient management coaching system that okay. for a small investment compared to what a coaching system is, yep. I guarantee you that it will change your life, change your practice, and move you very quickly towards your vision. So you can uh, look at the dates, EliteCoachingLLC.com. But more importantly, we, won't, I need to, we need to talk and see where you're at, what your goals are. So I take this very seriously. I, I don't want anybody to invest anything in Elite unless I'm confident I can take you on a direct path towards your vision. Okay. So give me a call, 253-851-8353. And if you call me, let's just chat personally. Uh, regardless of what the outcome is, I always love to build relationships with other people that uh, are advocates in chiropractic. Call Dr. Fred. He's a stud. He will change your life. Guarantee. I've been to several of his events, and his doctors, his coaching clients, his friends love him and the results, and the results they get with your coaching buddy. So call Dr. Fred. What's your email, Dr. Fred, if someone wants to email you? It's Dr. Fred one D R Fred F R E D one the number one at MSN.com. So you can email me directly. Awesome, cool. So now we have the last tip of the day, and if you are uh, curious what it is, just put your email here, and you're gonna get a special video.